Oh, people are still coming into the waiting room. So welcome everybody. We're really excited that you're here. Uh, keep got to keep adding people into the in. So I'm really excited. Lisa, you know what? I'm going to have you pronounce your name for me because um, I know I know it, but I don't want to say it it's wrong. It's Lisa Dino, and I'm so happy to be oh, here. Okay. See you. Hi, Lisa. It was Hi. actually Lisa. No, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, oh, okay. A different Lisa. Okay. It's Lisa who's leading our, uh, who's oh, speaking. Sorry. That's okay. Um, so Lisa, go ahead and introduce yourself. And let's see, I probably should have everybody... If you're not on mute, go ahead and mute yourselves because you, technically, yeah, you should all be muted coming in. But if if it didn't work that way, then we'll want to um, make sure that everybody's muted just so that we can uh, hear everybody okay. And so why don't we jump in and get started? So this is called uh, Ad Advice from a Pro and I'm excited to have Lisa join us. And she, Lisa, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, how you got started and we'll let you take it from here. I'm Lisa Tonjus Moritz. Um, and uh, there's a lot of us Lisas, if you, you didn't already know that. I once, a few years ago, I was on a call with, I think there was like eight of us on the call and four of us were named Lisa. Through, it was an Apple, I think it might've been Apple Photos training. It's call funny, well, we had the Lisa and Lisa. Yeah, it was crazy at one point, I know. We had, <laughs> yeah. For our well, yeah, Lisa and, and Lisa, class, Lisa, Lisa, we Lisa. all were, <laughs> hanging out at conference in Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just a lot of Lisa's. So um, my background, um, I was just telling um, Kathy before we got on that I, it's a very sunny day here, a snowy day with some sun um, in Omaha, Nebraska. And I grew up in Nebraska, but after I went to the University of Nebraska, I moved to Austin, Texas and uh, was a, worked for Wells Fargo most of that time as a branch manager. Um, so that's my previous career was in banking, totally not related to photo organizing at all. Um, but uh, organizing was my thing um, and they moved me from branches to branches to get them more organized and ready for internal audits and things. So, um, that's what took me into, and I um, actually remember walking into an office max and it was probably around 2000 and there was a um, brochure in the front entryway that was um, for a professional organizer. And I picked it up and I thought, well, that's a really interesting profession. <laughs> that's something I would like to do. And I held on to that for years. And then in 2007, when I left banking, I decided, well, I might as well try it. And that's when I started um, helping organize people every day. I love that hope, right? That was the full name of my business at the time. And, but my website's always been hope organizing. And um, when I, um, converted from sole proprietor to an LLC, the official name of my business is now Hope Organizing, but it now it stands for helping organize photos everywhere. Great, so tell us a little bit about, you made that switch, right? So you started out as a residential organizer, right? And then eventually you made the switch to photos. How did that happen? Well, I, and I actually remember the first time meeting you um, <laughs> was at the NAPO conference in okay. 2011. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting, but I, I was in total overwhelm. It was my first Snape Bell conference. And I was like, there's just so many things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then in 2012 at the Napo conference in Baltimore, I went to your breakout okay. and walked, immediately walked to the back of the room and signed up. <laughs> I remember yeah. that. I remember that was a fun breakout. That's where we had, we, we play acted like what a typical customer would be like, right? Yeah. And yeah that was fun. It was a big, it was a big breakout. This yeah. time. It was a big ballroom and um, kind of slowly started to try to figure out how to um, bring photo organizing into my business. Um, then at the first conference in 2013, bought my scanners and then got more into it. And by um, 
it wasn't probably until about 2015 that I really started to market myself as a photo organizer. I would just, and then last, last year after conference in my master class, I came home and said, I'm going to, instead of saying I specialize in photos, I, that's all I do. Wow. So, okay. So that's your, that's been your focus now. What, what is, um, any, anything, how's 2000, how's 2020 COVID crazy year been for you? <laughs> How are you well, the business? And, uh, I feel very backed up right now mm -hmm. <laughs> with scanning jobs. Um, I had an assistant, you know, that was coming and helping me with scanning. And, um, so she hasn't been here since March and my four and a half year old has been here almost every day since March. Um, luckily my husband's working from home too, but um, it's delayed me getting out big scanning projects because I didn't want, he, he's very interested in other people's photos. <laughs> some days not, some days he's like, what's this? And so um, it was good. I could, if I could have gotten more stuff done, um, it would have been better. Um, sure. I was hoping to get more digital projects mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone just wanted to bring me bins and bins of photos. <laughs> so is that, so that's an interesting uh, question. So for those that are on the call, we call this advice from a pro or career advice from a pro. So you can, if you have questions, you can go ahead and uh, put them in the chat. I'll try and keep up, but it's just me. And there's quite a few people actually here. So it must be a good day to be uh, joining a, a zoom meeting. And uh, if you're interested in, as we go through this, becoming a photo manager, I did put at the beginning of the chat a link. I just recorded a webinar this morning with a promotion for joining January 1st. But those of you that are listening to this call, you can actually take advantage of that sooner than later, which is exciting um, for you. So, but let's go ahead. And so Lisa, tell us, so scanning, you're mentioning scanning. So what would you say, what's a typical client for you? And what's a typical project that you do? I typically do a lifetime of photos um, or at least um, prior to the digital age. Um, I, mean, I have some clients that it's I've spanned both realms, um, but I've a lot of um, baby boomers or um, in the last year I've had children of baby boomers that died that where their parents have died. Um, relatively young, um, whether that was in their 50s or maybe 60s, and um, so that the, they can divide up the whole collection um, between the kids. Um, though I put it out there in my mind that I wanted to get away from that, <laughs> it still seemed like that's what I kept getting, because I'm like, it'd be a lot easier in 2020 to not deal with a lot of scanning, but so the scanning, so it's something that you'd like to change off from that, but do you find that a profitable uh, part of your business doing the scanning? Um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm obsessing and I'm about, oh, that, that, that doesn't look quite right and changing it a lot. And so um, I'm just got all my equipment and I'm gonna start trying to figure out camera scanning in the next week or so, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're looking at taking that up a and up a notch for those that uh, are interested. Well, tell us, like, what do you love about what you do? What is it that that makes you want to work with photos and made you try to, you know, make that kind of shift in your business? I personally have always loved looking at photos, um, hearing the stories behind photos. I mean, it, since a young age, I was making scrapbooks of. Um, I know the first one that I helped with was in kindergarten. We went to Texas to visit my um, aunt and uncle. And when I left, my aunt had helped me make my own scrapbook to show for show and tell when I got back from kindergarten. <laughs> so that's when I first know I had a love of photos. And um, so I just love hearing people's stories, looking at their family history, being able to show them a photo maybe they haven't seen in years or maybe never have seen. Um, and do you do more when you, when somebody hires you to scan like their photo collection, do you do, or do people ask, are there additional services beside that? You scan their collection, get them back to them. Do you do other things like, you know, do people ask you to make photo books? I know you do slideshow because I know you've done one for us uh, for our conference. Is there other uh, services that you like to provide in addition to the scanning piece of it? Yeah, I always like to do 
either a photo book or a slideshow after um, the doing scanning. Um, so yeah, it's, I don't, I would say my least favorite thing to actually do is the scanning. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like to share and celebrate. So help them share and celebrate the photos is my favorite thing to do, so. Tell us a little bit more about that. What would be a way that you would help, if I came to you and said, here, I want you to scan these photos, but then what, what would you say to me? Um, you know, this is the basics and that um, I would love to help you, at, you know, whether it's facial recognition and other keywords so that you can find those photos. And then um, I consider sharing, figuring out the best platform for them and their family to share the photos, whether it's um, Smug Mug or Google Photos or Amazon. Um, I love digital photo frames. I've got two Nix plays in the house. I've got an Amazon <laughs> and a Google Hub, and I love it, whatever works best for a client. Um, but to figure out a platform that works for them. And then when I say celebrate their photos, that means making books or any other photo gift um, to share and yeah, keep to enjoy. Their That's the right. The and I think that's one of the reasons why I like to have people, and again, if there's any questions, go ahead and I'll try and see if I can read the questions at the same time in the chat, but um, we love you to go ahead and put those in there, but it's not always just about organizing or like you mentioned, <laughs> scanning. The one thing you don't like is the one job that you have a lot of, which is the scanning. Some people really love scanning. We always recommend when people become members too, if, you, if it's a, at some point you can outsource your scanning, right? You don't have to be the person who does all the scanning. You're choosing to keep that in-house, but it is a project that others can do for you. And then uh, you can pass that on and do the parts that you just really like to do, right? Uh, but now I know you won an award this recently. Tell us about the award for, uh, maybe you're not even know, surprised I'm telling you this, but did you win like the best organizer in Omaha? Oh, well, yes, I did get best of Omaha, um, which is a funny thing. It's, I don't know how many years they've been doing best of Omaha. I think it's Omaha Magazine's best of Omaha. It's definitely more than 10 years, it might be 20 years. And they probably five years ago, I said, you should have an organizer category. And I never heard back from them. And this year I had someone I know say, hey, what category can I vote for you? And I'm like, they don't have a category. <laughs> and then I got it and I didn't vote this year. I usually try to vote for some reason I didn't vote this year. I get an email saying, you've been chosen best of Omaha for home organizing. <laughs> But I'm like, oh, I didn't even know there was a category. <laughs> well, that's because somebody voted for you then. That's, well, I, that's that means you somebody should, voted for me. Don't, put, don't, that's so typical. Don't, uh, don't underestimate that. And that's, that you should be proud of that. Right. And, and it's a, it's a, so great. maybe next year I'll try to, you know, get people to vote for me. But. Yeah. And it tells people that, you know, people do this for a living. It's a real job. And, and, uh, and the people hire people to do this all the time. Right. So yeah. how, that's, how do you find, how have you found your clients? How have you be, gotten your, the, your name out there? Um, I would say if I look at, I mean, a variety of ways, my, probably my biggest client actually came, I started working with her in 2014 and it was like an Amazon local deal, which is like Groupon. <laughs> and she happened to buy two, it was like two hours for $50, uh, but she bought two of them. <laughs> And it's led to a biggest thing. So I say that because sometimes it's not, it's okay to try things because you never know what will happen. Um, I didn't get any other long-term clients from it, but I got one really big long-term client. From it. Um, but if I had to look at where um, the highest amount of re is referrals and it's not from networking groups per se, but more um, my volunteer involvement, whether it was junior league or JCs or CASA, um, just people that I met through those organizations being like, oh, I know someone that could help me with this. Or I know I was at a junior league um, committee meeting one day and someone said, well, Lisa helped me do scan these photos for my husband's family. And then I got another long-term customer that was sitting next to them. 
I think that, you know, when you're mentioning too, for those of you that are listening here that are wondering about the business model itself, it's not unusual to have long-term customers, right? I would say a lot of our members would attest to that. Sometimes it's a one-off, like a small project, but really most people have very large photo collections that they need. Uh, and there's a lot of work that they need done that, and there's usually not, unless there's a major event coming up, right? There's like a time crunch, but sometimes it can be not as much time driven. So you can have this ongoing relationship where you really get to know your customer. Have you found that to be the case? Yeah, I have, well, one client that I met because her daughter knew me um, through JC's, I think. <laughs> and I started working with her in 2015. Uh, but now her daughter's always like, well, if you need help with that, call your best friend, Lisa. <laughs> But you so, do lots of other kind of, like what's an example of something she might need help with? Oh, it's sometimes it's just, I've done, I keep it, she has not let me have her printed collection yet. Hers has all been dealing with her just digital photos after big trips and she just became a grandma this year. Um, and right now I just say, hey, I don't see your photos backing up to forever or little, wishing her an happy anniversary yesterday or, um, but it's, I haven't seen her in almost a year. <laughs> so, um, right. Because of COVID. So you, you're making sure that people, so you do help people make sure their photos are backed up. And then when, if she goes on a big trip, do you, you know, curate the digital collection kind of for her and go through and, and, um, eliminate the photos that aren't worth keeping and you know, that whole process as well. Yes. And I will just a side note, since we're talking about what that, particular client she went on a big uh, once of a trip lifetime to Lebanon um, and her friend shared all her photos with her using whatsapp oh okay but she download them from whatsapp and it ch changes the dates but it was a metadata nightmare <laughs> a dating nightmare because we had to figure out when was this photo taken to get everything kind of in line but yeah, but that and that's a typical example though right of a job that a photo manager does right there you're kind of like a detective and helping people um because that's not unusual right little mistakes can happen and or we have you know how, how many what's the an average number of if you run dedupe software through somebody right somebody's photo collection and stuff do you have like a number of what's the average number of duplicates you'll find in a in somebody's photo collection i no i don't oh you don't use that. never kept track of that but i can tell you the largest amount of duplicates of one photo I ever found was 24. 24 duplicates of one photo, right? Yeah, yeah. like the oldest grandchild. <laughs> and then, let's, oh, let's save it here and save it here and save it here. Right, that's a common thing. So let's, what else can I ask you that, um, again, people have questions specifically for Lisa, uh, go ahead and put them in there. Um, you know, as a membership, as a member of the photo managers, how has that been helpful for you as a, in your business and, you know, what is it, what would you say about that? Um, mostly, I think the biggest thing is, well, training and support, um, kind of every, the Facebook group or the website has been so helpful. And like, if you're ever like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out, or um, how could I do this differently? Um, it's been tremendous. Um, all the training that you put on webinars there's one a photo mechanic um webinar from i don't know how many years ago that i've watched <laughs> i have like notes at this point in time is when he talks about <laughs> this <laughs> that i've gone back to several times um the my the 2019 master class um is that i would have ever done if it wasn't um for um the photo managers that we stay in pretty close contact um, and right. just asking how how would you handle this or right so having that network of peers right that really support you and help you in that here's a good question wendy wanted to know um are there standard going rates for all the different types of services you provide and how do you set your rates um i um am mostly hourly um and i but i'm kind of trying to get away from that, uh, but it's hard after so many years and 
as we uh, say, you've seen one client, you've seen one client, because um, you never know what's going to be on that drive or, or in that box. Um, but I did at the beginning of 2020 start um, offering, I've actually only done one client this particular way, but um, a set fee for basic digital organization, putting it into yearly, monthly folders and debuting. Okay, and here's another question that somebody asked. Um, what kind of information do you provide in your 20 minute consultation? Do you find people um, feel better about booking you. I'm also going to share with everybody. We just, this is such a, these are, these are the questions that we can't answer in one. We'll do a little bit here, but we just completed something called profitability live last in November, where we talked about this for three days. We had, uh, our very experienced members, you know, t do the client studies where they work with the same client. They walk through the whole process of charging and for 2021. And you'll see that in that webinar that I mentioned that, um, that is, we are, going to uh, and our members don't even know this they're going to hear this on this call right now but we hired a the money manager coach that we use to do three workshops for free that's part of the benefit of membership that will be starting uh, at the end of january so and it's all about setting your prices understanding your money mindset knowing your value all of these things that really it's one thing to know the skills of being a photo manager right like how do you you know, you have the skill, you're good at scanning, you're good at talking to people about their photos, you're good at all that. But the, the hard part, right, is, you know, asking for the money and getting paid what you're worth. But so we are addressing that continually. And that's a big part of our training that's included in membership for 2021. But so let me just have you answer that question, though. What kind of information do you provide in your 20 minute consultation? And do you find people feel better about that after then, then booking you with that? Um, I definitely feel like in 2020, because I did try to do it via Zoom, but I do it however the com client's comfortable, but when they book it, it automatically sends them a Zoom link. Um, and it allows me to see, if they're talking about printed photos, then hopefully I can kind of see what they're talking about. Um, and um, it kind of varies. It depends what the client's looking for. As I, they um, immediately get a questionnaire that I asked them to fill out before we get on the call on, you know, a variety of things like what's your goal, which, you know, do you, um, are you PC, are you a Mac, um, where are you, where are your photos currently at, kind of some basic questions, so that if they fill it out ahead of time, it gives me a little knowledge of where they're coming from before, otherwise I try to answer those questions in that 20 minutes. Um, but it's kind of, I have those questions, but if they've already filled those out, it's more just a kind of a get to know you and a feel if they're comfortable with me. Great. That's, that's good advice. And I, I like the idea of having the questionnaire, right? You want to make sure if you're going to put your time into a 20 minute consultation too, that they're serious enough to have filled out a questionnaire and be real specific about what it is that they really, they really want to learn. Right. Um, so what else do I want to say? What um, We talked about how you found your clients, what you like least right now. It's scanning, even though that's the most work that you're doing. Uh, I would say I have a love-hate relationship with scanning because I love, the, like, after it's scanned and seeing it pop up on the computer. And I'm like, wow, especially when you find those ones that those tiny little old photos and then you get a scene big um, and being able to work with them but it's just the yeah when i look here's at a good, here's a good question that and i think we, we address this a lot in the photo manager this is a really important question somebody says they're working on a large family camera scanning project and would like to end the project with an about us book uh, at the moment they're concerned about copyright um how do you address copyright concerns oh that's a hard <laughs> um yeah i you know, in my, when I, someone gets my scanning price sheet, it says, you know, we won't scan things for copyright, but I will, that it have a copyright, but I will also be honest, if it's, if I'm doing their whole collection and they bring me old family photos, then those get scanned so that they're saved in case of a fire or what, flood or whatever. Um, and then I bring it copyright specifically if we're talking about a book or. Um, I think, you know, best practices 
uh, I think it's Alana who wrote, asked that question would be to, are these photos, if they are copyright, if they're professional photographers to try and to contact the professional photographer, if they're still in business to uh, get permission to use those photos. And then how will the About Us book be used? Is it strictly you know, just among family members or is it something that you're selling and, and using for a financial gain and also how you use that on social media? Those are important things to consider. And, um, but, and also you can, I think the PPA, the Professional Photography Association might have some really good information about copyright issues on their website because that is an issue for professionals and certainly becoming a greater issue today. But we definitely, uh, getting permission, and I'm sure, right, like you said, have that uh, people agreeing so that you're making sure you're following best practices. Uh, Marion asks, what kind of equipment do you use for scanning? What, what are, what, yeah, what is your scanning equipment? Um, I currently have the Kodak PS80 and an A3 flatbed. Um, so the but, Kodak Alaris is a PS80, is a, is a camera, as a is no longer being sold and no longer supported much to people's dismay. Fast photo, like the uh, Epson fast photo kind of replaced it, but it's not a great replacement for a lot of the huge scanning jobs, right? And flatbed is great for um, Album. large, albums and large kind of uh, products and stuff like that, right? So, um, and I know you said what you really, you want to do more digital. What was it about the digital that makes you interested in doing more digital work? Well, a lot of it's the fact that it doesn't take up a lot of room. Mm -hmm. I feel like my house, fortunate, I'm very fortunate. We do have a large home, but there's, I have this big shelf next to me. Uh, and then there's, I have a shelf in, a big shelf in our basement. Everything's up off the floor and covered properly. And then I have other tubs in a guest room in our basement. So these are other people's photos, right? Do you provide, photos. Yeah. Do you provide them with a like a inventory, a documentation of what you have of theirs? How do you make sure that people know that their their photos are safe and are people afraid to give you their photos? These are common questions I think a lot of people ask. Um, on my client agreement, it does say you know we'll do the best of our abilities to take care of your photos when they're in our possession. Um, but um, I always take pictures and do a broad inventory when I bring in a project. Um, but yeah, I can't, I don't detail it. I, I mean, it's like, this is how many albums, this is right, but you get people. how many folders or whatever when I get it. Um, I will say being in Nebraska in the summer, if I ever, I learned the ability to have tubs that are easy to carry because when we go on vacation or something, I make sure everything goes to the basement in case that a tornado would be to come through or something. But <laughs> because one day we were, there was a tornado warning very close to here and I was like carrying them all down to the basement by myself. And I'm yeah. like, when you carry a bunch of, you know, what are they, 25, 30 pounds if you got a big tub full of photos. Um, you're like, these need to be easy to carry. And hence the right. reason- We have a lot forward. of stories, people, uh, members in the, well, in California and other parts of the country, there was that one, I can't think of her name off the top of my head, but in during all the hurricanes down in New Orleans area, it was moving, you know, fam, uh, client photos in her car, in her, in her minivan. And the, the people were thrilled that she was taking care of them because they didn't have access to them and things. So there's so many stories like that. So let's, in ending here, um, what advice would you give to somebody who's thinking about doing this as a business, just getting started, and um, and you know, and what it is again? I guess that's how we'll end it. Any advice that you want to give? Um, I would say just get started. Don't worry about perfection, and um, and you probably know more than um, other people. The biggest things that I wish I would have done differently is keeping track of clients and you don't have to have a fancy CRM or anything like that, just a spreadsheet. Um, when I did my 20 or 10 year, I did, a, I did an open house and I literally opened my house and let people look in my drawers and my closets. Um, that was, you know, when I was doing organizing homes too. But um, I had to, I'm like, Oh, I used this email when I first started. Well, I was using my personal email and then I used this email. And then I, I just, I, I didn't have a good list of all the contact information for all my past clients. Um, and so like 
just keeping track of that in one place and then documenting your processes um, so that I've spent the last year trying to get it all and you can always change it but just to have it so like how did I do that last time or did did it, whether it's how you do keywording or how you do dates um, just try to document it and so that you have a system in place um, especially if you ever grow and bring on other people to do it but I just need it for myself a lot of times too like how did I do that? And um, right. So for those of you who think about joining too, if you're working on your own photos and you're thinking, you know, maybe this is a business that you want to add, if document your process of working on your own photos, right? So how long did it take me to scan this many photos or how long did it take me to uh, organize these photos or how long, you know, right. As you go through that process, because you'll want to, the goal is to have a really a great system, which requires the least amount of time and the most efficiency, right? And then, and that's a big part of the benefits of membership. Lots of people have been ahead of you figuring out some of these efficiencies and, and sharing their information. I mean, we, our philosophy is a rising tide lifts all boats, right? And so this generous sharing that occurs within our member community is amazing. And you can't be an expert in everything. So we have lots of people who can really talk to you all day long about the difference between a TIFF file or JPEG or, you know, whether you should use Adobe Lightroom or, you know, photo mechanic or different things like that. And they're so willing and, and helpful in giving out their and sharing their wisdom with you so that you're not stuck, but definitely setting those processes is important. So in closing, anybody have, let's see, there are no more questions, I think. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Again, I'm going to put this link to this, web, this webinar is so new that it's actually, <laughs> I'm sending you the Vimeo link. Whoops, that's the wrong uh, link here. I had the wrong thing capture, sorry. Um, nope, I can't, you can't edit. These are the questions I was going to ask that just got listed. <laughs> on. It's funny that it, that my copy and paste did that, but anyway, um, so you can see the link at the end of the questions, but, um, we'd love to have you join us. We'll, uh, definitely go to the photomanagers.com to learn more. And if you want to email support at the photo managers, Lisa, thank you so much for your time. You can find her on your website. Go ahead and tell us your website. Um, hopeorganizing.com and I'm hope organizing on most social media. We can follow you there. And so she's a great person to, to learn from as well. So thanks everybody. Enjoy. Uh, 2021 is going to be a, hopefully a good year. Please stay safe. And thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye.